Hi, this is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health, and I'm on day seven of the milk diet now. A uh, little congested, uh, and around day four to day five, I was extremely congested. I had a lot of sinus pressure, uh, felt like I almost had a full blown sinus infection. Um, I had some pain in my ear, which freaked me out a little bit uh, from what I've heard from another person, uh, JT, who tried the milk diet and had a very serious ear infection from it. But I'm feeling much better now, and the diet itself is really not all that difficult. I was having some cravings just to eat some solid food, some hot grilled steak and some cooked greens or something like that was really what I was thinking about the most, but that's really subsided and passed. Um, you know, I think it's really not that big a deal. Uh, you know, certainly easier than I thought it was going to be, and uh, my emotions are pretty stable. You know, I've had a few ups and downs, uh, which is pretty typical for me, drinking, you know, liquids only, uh, a lot of sweet foods repeatedly. Seems to kind of mess with me a little bit, but I seem to be getting that under control and everything's falling into place. I wanted to talk about Bernard McFadden today. This is his book, and one of the things that uh, got me interested in the milk diet, uh, you know, initially was reading this book and, and uh, you know, hearing that, you know, really he put a lot of good thought into this. This was written back in the early 1920s, and, uh, you know, I didn't know anything about Bernard McFadden. I just thought he was this one random guy who, you know, decided to write a book about milk and using milk fasting specifically to deal with chronic disease. So I've discovered recently that he was a lot more than that. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit about Bernard McFadden today. He's, uh, he grew up as a, you know, kind of an unhealthy kid, had a lot of health problems. His parents had a lot of health problems. They were both, uh, they both died by the time he was age 11. And, uh, he had a treatment when he was seven years of age uh, that almost killed him. It was a, a vaccine given administered by a doctor that was uh, there was something wrong with it or was uh, you know not a standard practice uh, for you know formulating the vaccine something like that. I forget what the exact uh, story is, but he almost died from it and uh, you know was told repeatedly that he was a very sick kid and that, uh, you know, he probably wouldn't live for much longer, and uh, this had a big impact on him. Not only did he develop a, an extreme distrust for doctors and standard medical practices and procedures at the time, uh, but he was also deeply inspired to pursue health, and uh, he was able to obtain it with flying colors, and uh, lived to be 87, and uh, was in good health, uh, you know, up until the end. Uh, so, yes, definitely a success story, especially considering that he was born in the, uh, the middle of the 19th century. Uh, Bernard McFadden, I had no idea. He was, uh, you know, really the precursor, the first health icon uh, in the world, uh, really. Um, there's been others, but it's not like he was the only one. But he actually created a, a magazine called Physical Culture. Uh, it still holds the record for the longest uh, health magazine, the longest publication. He was uh, continuously published for 50 years, and uh, he created all kinds of exercise contests. He was really a pioneer in bodybuilding and actually using exercise to restructure and recompose the body. Uh, he was the, one of the world's leading advocates of using natural methods to deal with the health problems and disease, everything from hair loss to uh, you know, heart disease and tuberculosis and other common illnesses of the early 20th century. Um, yeah, he did a lot of things like that. He started a, uh, a city, he called it Physical Culture City, and uh, it was really designed to be a health city. Uh, he started a health school, uh, all these kind of things. He was definitely a huge, huge icon in the health and, and fitness industry and was still doing all kinds of publicity stunts to show that he was uh, you know, a healthy, vibrant man. Even in his 80s, he was uh, skydiving and doing things like that. And uh, yeah, very interesting guy. Um, you know, he was obviously branded as being a little bit of a kook, and he was well known for his claims about you know certain methods and practices being able to just magically cure everything. And the miracle of milk uh, pretty much says it all. Um, you know, I think he 
gives the impression that, uh, you know, by following the milk diet, you can cure everything. Well, there's other complications, you know. Um, you know, I can't say that I'm feeling too great. I've got a lot of congestion. Uh, you know, he talks about how amazingly easy it is to uh, digest milk. Um, you know, my digestion is not, <laughs> not the best that it's ever been. Um, but at the same time, I'm definitely clearing some things up. Um, and, you know, the fourth day was the worst. It's been getting better since then. So that's, that's promising. And I certainly, uh, I certainly think that it's a powerful tool and it's something that, uh, that people need to know that it is an option. If they have a health problem, they know that they can turn to this, give it a shot, and see what it does for them. So anyway, um, yeah, te check out BernardMcFadden.com. Uh, very, very fascinating stuff. Uh, he sounds like a, quite a character. Uh, his, his original name was Bernard, uh, but he changed it to Bernard. It's <laughs> so kind of like a lion's roar <laughs> and uh, other things. But yeah, I got the site up on my computer right now. Uh, fascinating site. Uh, there's lots of books. There was a biography uh, recently written about him called Mr. America, uh, basically saying that he was really the, the precursor to you know, half or more than half of, of the current health fads, everything from chiropractic medicine to fasting to exercise and bodybuilding, uh, that he was really the, the, the groundwork, the foundation of, the, of all those different movements. So uh, anyway, very interesting guy, and uh, check him out, and I hope his milk diet is uh, at least lives up to some of the hype. I don't expect it to live up to all the hype, but uh, I'm... I'm starting to believe. I'm starting to believe that uh, that it can do some things for me. No major, major things yet. No rise in temperatures or anything like that. But uh, we'll see. I'll keep you posted as we keep the experiment going. That's it for me today. I'm Bernard, and uh, thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.